from Milpitas, California, at the edge of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering autonomous vehicles. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Milpitas, California at Western Digital. It's a, the uh, Auto Tech Council Autonomous Vehicle event, about 300 people really deep into this space. It's a, it's a developing uh, ecosystem. You know, we think about Tesla that's kind of got a complete uh, closed system, but there's a whole ecosystem of other companies getting into the autonomous vehicle space. And as was uh, mentioned in the keynote, there are literally thousands of problems. Great opportunity for startups. So we're excited to have uh, Oded Sagi. He's a senior director of product marketing from Western Digital. Oded, great to see you. Thank you very much, Jeff. So you were just on the panel, and and really that was a big topic is there are thousands of problems to solve and this ecosystem is trying to come together but there's it's complicated right it's not just the big car manufacturers anymore and the tier one providers but there's this whole ecosystem that's now growing up to try to solve these problems so what are you seeing from your correct. point of view yes correct so definitely in the past uh, automotive was was a, a tough market to to play in but it was it was simple from the amount of players and, and people you need to talk to, to design your product inside um, with the disruption of connectivity, smart vehicles, even before autonomous, there are so many new systems in the car now uh, that generate data or consume data. And so for us to kind of figure out what's the use case, right? How, how is this going to look in the future? Who's going to define it? Who's going to buy it? Who's going to pay for it? It has become more and more complex. Um, st happily, storage is in the center of all this. Right. So we, we get a seat at the table and everybody wants to talk to us. But it, yes, it's a very big ecosystem now and trying to resolve that problem, it's going to take some time. So what are some of the unique characteristics from a storage point of view that you have to worry about? Obviously, environmental jumps out. We've, we had the guy on before talking about bumpy roads, you know, Correct. the huge impacts on vibration. And, you know, you spent a lot of money for a tough book back in the day to put a laptop in a cop car. Right. This is a whole nother level of, of expense, investment, and data flow. Right. So for us, I think, um, you know, with, with all this disruption happening of, of full autonomous, people are very much focused on making that autonomous work, right? So for them, it's all about connectivity, it's all about the sensor, whether it's LiDAR or, or you know, cameras, uh, just making that work, right? All the algorithms and the software. And so for them, storage curr currently is, is an afterthought, right? They're saying, once we reach mass production, we'll just go and buy some storage and everything is going to be fine. So while they're prototyping, right, they can uh, uh, use any storage that they want, but if you think about a full autonomous vehicle out there driving not two hours a day like we are driving today, right? 20 hours a day uh, from cold to hot, um, going through areas without connectivity, suddenly the storage requirements are very, very different. And this is what we're trying to drive and explain that if we don't design the future storage solutions today, what's going to end up is that people are going to pay much more for storage just to make a basic use case work. Right. But if we start working now, and I'm talking about five, seven years out, we can have affordable solutions to make those business models work. And is that resonating in the industry, or are they just too focused on, on you know, better cameras? It, it definitely does, but um, as, as companies change, right? So let's just take the car makers for a second. They, they, ne they didn't necessarily have a CTO in place, right, to drive engineering and semiconductor. Right. So you got to find those figures, and you got to start working and educating them. It definitely resonates if you have the right person. Uh, once you find him, yes, um, it's on the list of priority, so we need to push. But it is happening, yes, it is resonating. And it's, and it's so different because you do have this edge case. You have so much data being collected out in the field, if you will, within that vehicle, some to go back to cloud, but you've got latency is always an issue, right, for safety. So a little different storage challenge. So are there any significant design thoughts that you guys are bringing into play on why this is so different and what is it going to take to really have kind of an optimal solution for autonomous vehicles? Yes, definitely there, there are a couple of vectors, I would say, or knobs that we need to uh, work on. Uh, one of them is temperature. So again, vehicles do tend to um, you know, go between hot and cold. Uh, unlike many other components that just need to make sure that they operate between hot and cold, we actually have a big challenge on keeping data uh, being accurate between hot and cold. So if you program cold and read hot and vice versa, uh, data gets corrupted. And, and not Oh, even within the structures within the media? Yes. Okay. And people don't know that. So for us to figure out what's the temperature range that the car through its lifetime is going to go through um, right. and, and make sure that you know, we meet the, the use case, that's a big, uh, big one. Um, what we call the endurance on the cycling of the storage. Again, if, if you cannot rely on connectivity, cannot rely on cloud because of latency, you need to record a lot of data in the car. So again, a car drives for seven years, 15 years, and you want to record constantly. How much do you need to record? 
we don't necessarily have the technology today to meet that use case, and we need to work with the ecosystem in right. figuring it out. So these are just two examples. Gotta imagine clean power as you're saying these things. If they can, you know, this you're not in Daddy's data center anymore. This is a pretty harsh yes. environment, I would imagine. Very harsh. Ugly power, inconsistent power, turning off the car before everything is spun down. There's all kinds of little, kind of. Uh, environmental uh, impacts in that whole realm that you would never think of in Correct. kind of a typical data center uh, instance. And even if you touch power, that's very interesting because even, you know, some people think, oh, there is no power limitation in a car. You can just enjoy how much power you want. Actually, it's very, very sensitive. The battery, if you think about an EV car now, uh, has so many components to run. And so even the power consumption, right, just the energy that you need to consume is becoming critical for each and every component in the vehicle. Right, and it's everybody's favorite AI comparison, right, is if, if a Kasparov had to, to, to fight the computer with the same amount of power it wouldn't have been much of a match. Right. So the, the, the power to run all this AI stuff is not insignificant. So it is gonna be a huge drain on these Correct. electric vehicles. Pretty exciting time. So when you get up in the morning, wh what's the biggest thing when you talk to people about autonomous vehicles that they just don't get? that people should really be thinking about? Yeah, so it, it goes back to some of the things we've discussed. Uh, definitely, again, we, we're seeing the use cases change. Um, we, are, we are working, again, with the broader ecosystem to explain the, the fundamental challenges that we have, right? What is our design cycle? What are the challenges that we have? So we start with educating the ecosystem so they know uh, what we have. And from that, we trigger a discussion because they realize, oh, okay, you know, because I do have a use case that probably you don't have a solution for how do we go together so that's we're d and we're doing it across the board it's not only happening in automotive it's happening in surveillance it's happening in the home space um, a lot of people don't know but the home space if you think about it again set top boxes are used to be huge sit outside in, in the room people are moving to these sticks right and they're right, behind the right. tv and they have no ventilation and they're small and they record all the time and they get to temperatures that we've never seen in the past so we need to even educate you know the the telcos of the world the set top box makers Everything is changing. Automotive is definitely ahead in, in a lot of innovation and disruption, but everything is changing right. for us. Well, automotive is fun because it's the bright, shiny object that everybody can see, right? We can't necessarily see a lot of IoT that GE's yeah. putting in to connect their factories. Right. All right, Oded. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your busy day and uh, really appreciate the insight. Thank you very much. All right, he's Oded. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from Western Digital at the autonomous vehicle event for the Autotech Council. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.